the main difference with both these procedures is in a nipple sparing mastectomy, we keep the nipple and the areola complex, uh, while in a skin sparing mastectomy, we take this out uh, and and uh, and keep the extra bit of skin which covers the breast envelope. Now, there are various indications and contraindications for both these procedures. More and more nowadays, we are actually opting for nipple sparing mastectomy because the cosmesis is better. However, if there are uh, indications that can actually increase the risk of uh, problems and cancers, then it is safer to take the nipple and areola out. One of the main uh, things to consider while offering these operations is where where the tumor site is, as it will uh, help the surgeon to understand and offer the incision or the types of mastectomy. The second bit is when these mastectomies are done, for example, risk redu reduction, then it is better for cosmesis to ke keep the nipple and areola. But the main thing is also the shape of the breast. Generally, in a small and moderately sized breast, a nipple sparing mastectomy would have less risk and are preferable to bigger breasts. So when a breast is big and tautic, that means if it's hanging, then when we put an implant in these situations or any tissue in these situations in the skin fold when the breast is taken out, uh, then the projection may not be in the correct place. So the nipple and areola has to be actually in higher up in the projected breast. So therefore, uh, that could be a, kind of a small contraindication for a nipple sparing mastectomy and a skin sparing mastectomy in that case might uh, could be better. So again, in both these procedures, uh, depending on where the tumor site is and how the breast is shaped, the incisions could be performed in various parts of the breast. The most commonly placed incisions for a skin sparing mastectomy is just over this, uh, where the nipple and areola sh should have been. Or if it's a large breast and we have to reduce the size of the breast, then it's like an anchor scar. For a nipple sparing mastectomy, the most common incisions that we would prefer or I would also prefer is uh, in the inframammary fold. So your uh, where your uh, bra uh, wire sits. So we go through there and then take the breast out. So the nipple and areola is where it should be. Uh, very uh, rarely some surgeons also uh, give an incision in nipple sparing uh, mastectomy just on the side of where the nipple and areola are because the access to the breast tissue uh, is then equidistant and is better. So it's mainly a technical uh, preference for the surgeon, whichever is convenient and safer for them in their hands. So the benefits are both for these procedures are is cosmetic outcomes. Um, some uh, patients might prefer to keep their nipple and areola so to make it look more natural because whatever uh, amount of uh, reconstruction we do with the nipple, we may not get that perfect look because of the skin, that is specific thin skin thickening that is naturally there for the nipple and the areola. The patient will not feel the sensation of the nipple. It's mainly for cosmetic purposes. With a skin sparing mastectomy, we can reconstruct the nipple. And also then we tattoo the areola around it. Generally, I prefer if it is a bilateral procedure and the patient needs a skin sparing mastectomy, then it's much more easier to get symmetry with a nipple reconstruction on both sides with tattooing uh, if they could not have a nipple uh, sparing mastectomy. Uh, so these are the main challenges. It's mainly reconstructing the nipple afterwards. They are almost always done with a breast reconstruction. So uh, we, we keep the skin uh, and the nipple and skin in the nipple sparing mastectomy. So you get a good envelope and fold of skin to uh, have the prosthesis behind this to reconstruct the breast. So this is these mastectomies are, are uh, generally done for reconstructive purposes.
um, the recovery is uh, is not very uh, prolonged in these cases. Generally, a per patient will come in, have the mastectomy, and they go home the next day. So they're able to be up and walking. However, to be where they were before the surgery might take about six to eight weeks. They will normally have a drain, which they uh, take with them uh, home. And then this drain is removed in a few days. Um, and, and, um, and hence, this is actually the quickest recovery uh, for reconstruction uh, in the plethora of reconstruction that we have. Now, the risk, there has been uh, traditional talks and evidence which says that there's a slightly higher risk if you keep the nipple and areola. But this is only... Um, in patients who have higher genetic risks like uh, BRCA gene and other high risk genes that could cause cancer. Also, if the cancer was very close to the nipple, then that could increase the local risk of recurrence if it was closer to the nipple. But we, in those cases, we always recommend to take the nipple out. So there's just a slightly higher risk, but it is not statistically higher risk.